All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. So the first story that I've got for you guys today, interestingly enough, Patrick Moore may be switching to classic physique. So Patrick put up this post, and he says, what if the comeback wasn't for open? What if it was for classic physique? What if I cared more about my condition, lines, and aesthetics more than size? What if I took all of this time to break down muscle and switch categories? Stranger things have happened. And you can see my comment there. I said, what's your height? Now, the reason why I said that is because in the past, when people have hinted at Patrick that he should switch from men's open bodybuilding to classic physique, it seemed unrealistic because for his height, he's under six foot. So his exact height, I don't know. I do know he's under six foot. And if you were up to six foot, the heaviest you could weigh would be 222 on stage. Now, when I commented what's his height, a bunch of people responded and said 5'10". So he's about the same height as me. So what that would mean, according to the IFBB's official rules, is 5'10 to 5'11". He can weigh up to 215 pounds, or 98 kgs. And 5'9 to 5'10", he can weigh up to 207 pounds, or 94 kgs. So if I'm not mistaken, I believe Patrick competes at over 240 pounds, so on stage 240 plus. So if he were 5'9 to 5'10", he would have to lose about 33 pounds to fit within that weight category. If he were 5'10 to 5'11", which seems to be what most people are saying, I would say the weight cap would be 215, so that would be 25 pounds that he would have to lose. Now, in all honesty... If he were to fall in between 5'11 and 6 foot, the 222, that one I think seems a little bit more realistic. Now, it's actually pretty common that when guys uh, do the height, when they get, what would you call that, being measured? When they do the measurements before the show, there's a lot of times where guys have incorrect weights based on what their height actually is. When they get measured, meaning they don't have an accurate idea of what their height is. So they come in thinking they're going to be one weight. Um, and then at last minute, they don't make weight and they got to either really, really deplete themselves or they just can't compete. That is not an uncommon thing, but the measuring is often done the day before the show. So similar to 212, a lot of these guys, they have to weigh 212 and weigh in before the show. But when they step on stage, they have time in between that weigh in to carb up and fill out and then step on stage. So for Patrick to get down to 222 just to weigh in at that, he still has the opportunity to carb up and fill out in between. You know, sometimes it's a day, sometimes it's actually two days between the measure on the bigger shows, uh, between the measuring and weigh-ins and actually competing. But me and Patrick were actually talking about this earlier, and I think we're going to try to uh, get on a call. So if you guys want to see an interview, perhaps, with Patrick Moore on this channel, thumbs up this video and let me know. And also let me know in the comments down below if you think it's a good or bad idea for Patrick to make the switch to classic physique. Now, personally, I'm going to be completely honest. I love to see, I would love to see him switch to classic physique. In the long run, being lighter is going to be less stress on your body, not having all that muscle mass. And if he did have to lose 20, 30, maybe even 40 pounds, I don't think he weighed 260. But when he first said he wanted to, uh, you know, gain weight and take a year to improve, he was talking about his walk around weight being 270. So if he was going to be competing in the 220s, in the long run, that's going to be a much healthier route. And again, I've said this before in reference to the Phil Heath thing. If a bodybuilder looks like they're downsizing or is acting like they want to or suggest that they want to downsize, again, I think we should be encouraging of that because I think overall it is the healthier option. I think classic physique is by far the healthier option compared to men's open bodybuilding. They're both, they both have their risks, for sure. You know, at the end of the day, classic physique is not a natural division. It's not like it is. So let's not pretend like it is. But on the other hand, comparing it to men's open bodybuilding from possibly a health risk standpoint, I would, I would certainly argue that classic physique in the long run, just, you know, if you, if you argue the sheer, uh, you know, the size comparison, just the extra stress that it would put on your heart to be 300 pounds versus a guy competing in 200 to 225 or whatever, I think there's a lot more longevity in that 200 pound range. Now, next up in the news, let's talk about the Toronto Pro, which is happening this weekend. So the Toronto Pro, we've got the competitor list for men's open bodybuilding. In all honesty, it doesn't look like it's that deep of a lineup right now. Only nine confirmed competitors 
for the Toronto Pro this weekend. Um, I believe it's going to be on Sunday, by the way. So you've got Khaled Alkazim, Victor Yoel Rea Cano, Douglas Connor, Quentin Araya, a.k.a. Quint Beastwood, um, Iron Galley, Stanimal, Stan DeLongu. I always, I, I never know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Carlos Longoria, Joe Seaman, and Joel Thomas. So the guys that I'm looking at out of that crop, obviously Quint Beastwood um, is going to be one of the favors in this one, fifth place at the Romania show. Stanimal, another guy that I've got my eye on here, and Joel Thomas. Joe Seaman as well. So Joel, Joe, Stanimal, and Quentin are really going to be the four standout guys, in my opinion, in this lineup. But the thing to remember here is that while none of these might be the biggest names, this is an Olympia qualifier for 2022. So whichever one of these guys wins this show, their name is going to be added to the Olympia roster for next year. So this, this is really the opportunity. Um, for those of you guys that are fans of Quint Beastwood's physique, he's a more aesthetic men's open guy, and we love that. Um, this is really his big shot to get to the Olympia. Or if you're a fan of Stanimal, you know, the training partner of Sean Roden, this is his chance to get to the Men's Open Olympia 2022. But let me know your Toronto Pro predictions in the comment section down below. All right, now next up in the news, which show is Breon Ainsley doing next? So recently on Instagram, Breon Ainsley posted this photo, which was clearly a prep photo from this year's Olympia, as the caption, that check-in before bed. Blank weeks to say, psh, to this look. So basically he's alluding to what will the next show he does be? How many weeks out is he? Well, according to my sources, it looks like we're going to see Breon versus Rough Diesel on the Arnold Classic stage the first weekend of March 2022. So that's going to be pretty interesting. We're going to get kind of a rematch between Breon and Terrence, who Terrence has been runner-up now two years in a row to Chris Bumstead this year and in 2020. Um, and Breon has taken third right behind Rough Diesel this year and also in 2020. So if it's true that him and uh, Rough Diesel are really doing that show, this will be a good opportunity for Breon to regain some momentum. Imagine how exciting that would make the Olympia if Rough Diesel just beat Breon at the Olympia for the second time, but Breon is able to regain some ground and somehow beat him at the Arnold Classic. That would make their showdown be that much more interesting at the Olympia because then it at least presents the possibility that Breon could move back up to at least second place. Now, even more interesting, I also heard that Urs, fourth place at the Olympia, Urs Kalsinski in classic physique, will also be doing the Arnold. So you're going to have two, three, and four all in that Arnold classic lineup. Now, I don't believe Logan is doing it again this year, as far as I know. And obviously, Bumstead is not doing it. But it looks like you're going to pretty much have a pretty near Olympia caliber lineup at the Arnold Classic. Um, from what I'm hearing, Rough Diesel, Breon, and Urs Kalsinski. And maybe we could see a changing of the placings at the Arnold compared to how the Olympia reflected their placings. Now, speaking of potential competitors at the 2022 Arnold Classic, Lionel Baiecki. He's a guy that we haven't seen on stage in a while. We were supposed to see him on stage at this past year's Arnold Classic, but he wasn't able to make it. And he posted this photo. The photo on the left is from 2021 to my recent preparation here. And the, here is the physical condition, which I have not had the opportunity to show my supporters, fans, and friends. The photo on the right is from the Arnold Classic 2018, where I play six. And he says, I can't wait to step on stage in 2022, if God allows. And I'm also told that Lionel is right now um, kind of confirmed for the Arnold Classic. I guess it's really just going to be a question again this year whether or not he's able to get over here. You know, again, I don't know if last year it was visa issues. I know there was kind of a legal situation with him going on um, over in his country of France. So I don't know if that had anything to do with it or if it was virus related why he couldn't get a visa. But um, it looks like his intention, at least, is to come compete in 2022. And the final story that I've got for you guys today, Stanimal posting some physique updates. As you guys know, he's going to be one of the competitors in this weekend's Toronto Pro. Um, you know, really one of the better competitors in that lineup, one of the guys that I think we should have our eyes on. I um, mean, he posted these updates from what he says was 18 days out from that show. Um, and as you can see, he's got a front double bicep, a front lat spread side chest, side tricep, and an abs and thighs. I think he looks pretty impressive. I think so far he's done pretty good 
um, with his transition to men's open bodybuilding. And I'm kind of excited to see where he lands in this Toronto Pro lineup. Like I said, it's really not the deepest lineup. Um, so him, Joe Seaman, uh, Joel Thomas, Quint Beastwood, these are kind of the top four guys that I'm really looking at to be first call-out guys. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised, like I said, if we see Stanimal right there in the mix for potentially a top three placing. But this is going to be an opportunity in Toronto for a guy that might not otherwise get that qualification. Um, so you're probably going to see a new name added to the Men's Open Olympia lineup this year. Uh, but let me know your guys' Toronto Pro predictions in the comments down below. Please make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you did, in fact, enjoy it. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet already. Um, that really helps out a lot. As always, I love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.